Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a really good plan to stay with us because the next debate moderated by Geotap will be very interesting. In fact, this session provides really an insight for fleet manager that already have or plan to make use of telematics in their fleet. For this debate, I'm really glad to welcome on stage uh, Mikhil Westrop, um, Westrop, a fleet manager at uh, mm -hmm. Open Browers. Hello, Mikhil. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Uh, Willem Dijf, CEO at Move Connected Mobility. Hello, Willem. Hello, Daniel. Thanks for having us. And, and uh, uh, Christoph Ludwig, uh, Vice President OEM Europe at Geotap. Hello, Christoph. Hello. Okay, good. So the stage is yours now. Okay, and um, enjoy. All Thanks right. Thank you, Daniel. We will do. Um, we'll have an interesting chat for, for the audience and we'll cover a couple of topics that relate to fleet telematics and some general, general views, but also going a little bit more in the details, especially on the OEM side. So what does OEM connectivity mean for fleets and how can fleets make, make use of that? And we'll have a short insight into uh, the adoption of electric vehicles. But before doing so, um, I will have a short introduction of the round to the audience and um, also will ask Mikhail and Wilhelm to answer one question in the introduction. And that is, when did you first got into contact with telematics as an icebreaker and to get to know you a little bit? Not to be impolite, but I will start to give you some more seconds to accom accommodate. Um, so, as mentioned, my name is Christoph Ludwig. I work with Geotap. I'm responsible for the OEM relations, and um, therefore, I'm very happy to moderate uh, this session. Um, to answer the question I just posed myself, uh, I'm happy to do so as well. Um, I first got into contact uh, many, many years ago at the beginning of the 2000s, when in Germany the uh, toll collection system for trucks was established, uh, which was GSM and GPS based. And I had the task to work a little bit on that as well. And that's when I first was introduced to telematics. And since then, uh, I've always worked in the area of uh, vehicle connectivity, which I enjoy very much. Now I'd like to hand over to Wilhelm for a short introduction of himself and the company you're working for. It would be great to know as well. Thanks, Christoph. Yeah, so my name is Wim Dijf. I'm the CEO of Move Connected Mobility. Uh, Move Connected Mobility is in the business of connecting commercial fleets, uh, allowing fleet managers to operate their fleet more efficient, uh, safe and sustainable. Um, we have uh, uh, many clients in Europe, um, some of them are even global. Uh, some of the names just to mention is uh, Eden Springs, PepsiCo, uh, but more known here in the Netherlands as well, Jumbo, or Cool Blue, HelloFresh. Um, so that's our client base. So the question on when did I get in contact with telematics first uh, was actually back in 2005-ish, uh, when I was working for GE, um, we looked at uh, our market in transport and logistics and saw that there was opportunity for telematics in that space, uh, which was not like with a company like Geotap, uh, uh, off the shelf products didn't exist. So with the GE Global Research Center, we actually started to build, uh, build our own. So that was uh, my first introduction to, uh, to telematics. Thank you. And over to you, Miki. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Michiel Wesop. I'm uh, the fleet manager of uh, Hoppenbrouwers Techniek. We are an uh, installation company in the Netherlands. Um, we have around uh, a thousand uh, vehicles uh, and my job is to uh, maintain them all. And uh, my first uh, uh, time I, uh, I, uh, I was connected to, uh, uh, to systems was when I was working as a cab driver. Um, when I started to work there, it was around also uh, the same as uh, Christoph, around 2000. Um, and you used to be uh, uh, used to be a very free uh, professional. Nobody could see where you were. Uh, and then they started uh, to have these uh, GPS systems, and there was a red dot on the, on the screen. And from now on, they could see where you was. So that's when I ended the job. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I started in this business 
uh, and, and now I can see all the all the benefits of the system. So uh, it's a whole whole lot of business there at this moment. Good, thank you very much. So you have got first-hand experience with telematics uh, as a driver and as a fleet manager. And yeah. as you can see in this round, we uh, have a lot of connectivity and telematics competence and uh, with uh, Michiel also a fleet manager who has first-hand experience. So this is why I believe this will be a very insightful session to you. To kick it off, um, Michiel, I think it would be a good idea to explain not uh, your experience as a driver uh, now with telematics but as a fleet manager so are you using telematics in which way and what are your thoughts what are the benefits you env envisage in using telematics yeah well we've got uh, we've got a number of uh, companies uh, who joined uh, the Hoppenbauer's Technica uh, uh, company uh, the last years and all of those uh, companies already had these uh, telematic systems and uh, actually, uh, Hopper Mouse itself doesn't have any telematic systems. So uh, in a couple of years, I, uh, we had a lot of companies with uh, all kinds of different telematic systems. Uh, and of course, we, uh, all the contracts uh, of these systems still go on. Um, and now we're, we're at the moment, we're trying to, uh, uh, to get a system that we can uh, put on all the different, uh, uh, all the same cars. So we've got one uh, platform for all the same cars. Um, and our experience is that uh, it, isn't, it isn't possible to, uh, to, uh, uh, to maintain the whole uh, fleet without a system like this, um, especially in uh, fleet optimization, productivity, uh, um, sustainability uh, we need to have a system uh, like this uh, like the same as you are offering and for that reason uh, for the last year we have a pilot uh, and we're uh, trying all the different uh, benefits of this system all right thank you very much and maybe Willem from your point of view you have experience uh, with a lot of uh, customers and use cases and uh, situations in, in which telematics can be used so what's what's your experience and what's what's your thought on the benefits of telematics in, in fleets yeah we have um, amongst our clients we see that uh, predominantly people are looking or fleets are looking for uh, improved safety uh, efficiency and so think about uh, saving cost in their fleets. Um, but more and more, we also see now uh, the sustainability question coming up and electrification of fleets and how we can help them there. Um, so that's where uh, the primary goals are of our clients. Uh, and that's where we, uh, we help them. And the way we do that is uh, by first truly understanding what it is that they are, uh, uh, the problems that they face and the challenges that they have. Uh, before we start to solutionize. So it doesn't mean that we offer customized solutions, but we just want to make sure that uh, um, uh, the operations of the, of the fleet uh, gets in hand what really drives their goals. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's how we do that. Thanks, and I think that's a very important point, um, that telematics is, is not just about data and data gathering. It's more about what do you do with the data? What analytics can you apply? What rules, what alerts can, can you uh, install? So for every fleet, it is different and there's no one size fits all system. So you really have to adapt it to your processes and, and uh, to the way you work, I guess, to, to make the best out of that. Um, but talking about about data, um, I would like to switch or come to the point of OEM integration a little bit. So currently, we see there are two different ways of obtaining data from from the vehicle. Um, one is with the classical um, devices that are being installed in the vehicle in an, as an aftermarket solution. And ever more evolving now is the direct connection to the OEMs. So the vehicles, uh, typically most newer vehicles have connectivity systems uh, on board, X factory and data is being gathered in the vehicle is being transmitted to the service of the OEM. And um, that's another source of the data that telematics companies can obtain data for, for the clients to directly connect to the 
embedded telematics in in the vehicle so william do you have any any experience with this so far and uh, if yeah, if yes what what is your experience good and bad both sides okay well let's uh... Let's start with the good, uh, Christoph, because <clears throat> we uh, in, uh, in Move Connect Mobility really believe that this is going to make a, a real difference shaker. And we've heard already this morning the expectations on how many connected fleets there will be in 2025. Uh, I think the, this OEM connection is uh, one of the, uh, the main drivers. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that is that what we see today is it takes uh, fleet owners, operators a long time um, from understanding what the benefits could be in actually uh, signing up. Yeah? So also Michiel said, you know, we're, we're in the pilot uh, for, for many, many months, and rightfully so. Um, but the OEM connection can just give fleets like Hoppenbrouwers uh, easy access to those benefits uh, right from out of the gate. And so in, in MOVE, we call it the, the Netflix model. Um, uh, and it doesn't come falling out of the sky. I, I was at a conference once where the uh, co-founder of Netflix, Mark Randolph, uh, explained why Netflix picked up so, so quick. And the real reason for that was is that they just provided easy access to entertainment. And by the flick of a button, you can subscribe. And at the same button, you can unsubscribe. And, and that's really what's needed uh, uh, to give easy access to, to fleets uh, to those benefits so they can experience it. And if they don't like it, you know, they can just switch it off the next month, right? So um, that's, uh, I, I think, a critical one in, in getting to that. Um, what we see is the, the, the bad side for the moment, because it's a market that's maturing, is that there's no uh, harmonization across the OEMs, right? So uh, if you get OEM connected data from one brand, it doesn't mean that you get the same data from the other brand. Um, that's one. Second is uh, they, they obviously want to have uh, a subscription paying model for themselves behind it as well. Um, but also there, the harmonization in what it costs from one OEM to the other uh, is really not aligned yet. And uh, I think that's where um, uh, the market will benefit if, if on those both sides the, that will be solved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good that's insight. That's also what we uh, experience. Uh, that uh, uh, the benefit of the OEM uh, connection is that uh, we can easily uh, uh, access a car tool uh, to the platform, um, and that uh, otherwise we should uh, put a, a bit of hardware in it. And now we can just click on it, and the car is there uh, in, in a couple of hours, and then we can see the car. And especially uh, there's a benefit when you've got new cars; they don't have to go. Uh, uh, be fitted with the hardware. It just just put a click on, and it's it's very easy. Uh, and it's also the same if uh, w when there's a, a crash and you have to sell a car, uh, you don't have to build it in uh, again or build it out in the the other car. Build it in in a new car. Uh, when you've got a lot of uh, vehicles, it, it's it's uh, time is uh, everything. So uh, it's easy that you just put it on the platform. Yes, it's very good, very good insight. Thank you. And I can absolutely share that view and the pros and, and cons you mentioned. I think it's an, an easy way uh, to get access to the data, but uh, as you mentioned, it needs to be harmonized, it needs to be standardized uh, so that uh, telematics providers can really make use of the data across all brands. Um, because typically, as you know better than I do, uh, there are no single branded fleets out there. Um, so you have data from different brands, different makes, model years, and so on. And that really needs to be harmonized to make uh, to get the full value out of the data. But in, in general, I, I also believe that uh, the future will be with the embedded telematics. Every car will have a telematics control unit installed. Um, it doesn't make too much sense to, to build in a second device. Um, in the next years, it will take some time. Nevertheless, there will also be, I believe, some use cases, some reasons why you need aftermarket devices. If you have special equipment, if you have really special use cases, uh, which cannot be uh, done with the embedded solutions. But um, for sure, I believe the telematics of the future will predominantly be a, a software business, so to say. 
Um, Can I, Christoph, build on that? And, uh, so the future is, um, uh, you know, all about data, right? And when we are at that point when um, vehicles are connected, right, without an aftermarket solution, but just OEM connected, and it's as e getting that data is as easy as getting water from the tap. Then what we believe, and it's a, a, a future thinking, is that that data should be shared to all the partners that are around a, a fleet like Hoppenbrauers. So, you know, if they use a leasing company uh, uh, from where they lease uh, the, the vehicles or whether they're using the insurance company for the insurance of the vehicles or, you know, any, any other partner, you can start to imagine that if that data can be shared to them, right? then they can actually make use of that in order to provide better leasing products or insurance products back to the same fleet. So if we come to that state, yeah, then, then we believe in move that the, the fleet operator or the owner uh, is actually the product itself. And therefore, they should not even have to pay for the product. It is all the parties around them that can differentiate their service offerings back to the, the fleet owner is where uh, the money is being made right? so it's the the classical social um uh, dilemma uh, quote, but <laughs> if you're not paying for the product you are the product right and i think that, that is where this market is heading towards so. michael what, what do you think think about that um you being the product and not the customer. Yeah. Well, it would, it would be great if uh, someone else pays for it. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, another reason, because uh, we talked about uh, that the most of fleets uh, uh, do have different brands. Well, uh, we have a one, uh, one brand. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we only uh, use uh, one single brand. Uh, and because of uh, of uh, another companies, we've got like uh, 100 different vehicles, but we only have got like uh, Citroëns. And for us, uh, the OEM uh, part is very interesting because uh, uh, we've got uh, dealerships, and we want to use them uh, for uh, predictive maintenance. So uh, I, I don't have to uh, be a part in that anymore. So uh, the, the dealerships. Uh, uh, can call our uh, uh, drivers uh, to tell them there's something wrong or they should be there. Or, and even in uh, when it uh, when it isn't a problem at the moment, but it, it would be a problem. That's the real benefit. So if they can see well your battery is low or uh, we've got a three oil hazards uh, warning, um, which isn't shown in the in the panel at the moment. Uh, that's for us a real benefit. Um, and if you use one brand like we do, uh, we derive only a uh, Citroën, uh, then we can optimize, optimize uh, that. Yeah. That, that's a wonderful example for what Ulle mentioned, um, that everything should go then automatic and that the service providers, your service providers, um, should have access to the data um, to really manage your fleet. That's why you have service providers in your fleet from insurance to leasing to service stations and so on. And if they yeah. can access the data, it makes life easier, much easier for yourself. And the good thing about data is um, you can easily share it. And I think it's the only good that if you share it, it, get, it gets more valuable. Um, so that's really, really an approach uh, that has to be taken. Um, but to, to make that work, um, I think it's also important, like we mentioned before, to have some kind of standardization, some kind of harmonization, and really open platforms um, that can connect different service providers to the database um, so that uh, data can be made use of in, in different use cases. I think that's that's very important step to get the full value out of the uh, OEM embedded data. Yeah. Good. Um, maybe we uh, switch a little bit over to the EV side. Um, and this is related to connectivity as well. Um, as we all know uh, electric vehicles uh, become more and more popular and it's mandatory for those vehicles to have connectivity on board to learn how the vehicles are being used uh, to access the state of charge and uh, the battery and so on so connectivity here is, is really important 
And Michiel, I believe you have some experience with EVs already. So would you like yeah. to share your experiences so far with the audience? I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, of course. Well, um, we started uh, the beginning of last year with our first EV van. Uh, of course, we had uh, already uh, like a 30 uh, normal cars for, uh, uh, for the uh, project leaders. But uh, last year we started with the first van and uh, it's very difficult to uh, to get uh, the electric vans into uh, the fleet because uh, it's easy to buy them uh, they are good they are uh, easy to use uh, the range is good uh, charging is okay everything is okay it's exactly the same vehicle as we already had which is uh, the Citroen Jumpy but still it is uh, diff uh, difficult to uh, to sell them in your organization because, um, well, what's the benefit for the user? Because they already have diesels, they can go everywhere, they work great, there's there's no reason for them to, uh, to change to EV. So we tried different approaches. Uh, I bought one and uh, I told on the internet, uh, well, uh, this is the first EV van and uh, we like to get, get to know to this car. So uh, we've got like 18 different uh, uh, companies and we, uh, we every month the, the, the car is uh, somewhere else. And if you want to use it for a day or a week, please try it. So uh, we, got, uh, we got promoters inside the organization. Uh, well, that didn't work <laughs> because it's very slow uh, and still people aren't very enthusiastic. So um, then I looked for people who, uh, who were already EV minded themselves, who had a, a, an EV of their own. And uh, right now uh, they are my promoters of this car. So uh, they are uh, elderly people who work a long time at Hoppenbrauhaus. Uh, they are really hopjes as we call them. And, and uh, we've got four, or four of, those, uh, of those cars driving and everybody sees that uh, they are very easy uh, people drive uh, like uh, 15,000 miles in uh, in uh, three quarters of a year without any uh, problem um, so uh, they are very they are usable that's what uh, what we see and uh, instead of me uh, uh, buying them and uh, giving them to people who don't want them we try the opposite uh, approach uh, that uh, the mechanics uh, um, uh, will sell them in their own organization when they're having a lunch. Uh, if you see my car, it's easy, it's fine, it works great. Uh, where did you get it? And they and they get uh, uh, well, they tell them that it's it's quiet, it's uh, it's um, a bit more luxurious. So uh, we we bought them a bit more luxurious, so there is a benefit to it. So uh, they got this uh, seat heating and stuff like that. So uh, well, on this um, this is the first uh, year of it, um, and now we have to go move on um, with uh, quickly changing to EV, uh, and that's where the uh, uh, the move uh, the OEM integrated uh, system works for us. So we want to have some sort of an EV filter so we can see which is the, the easy, which, which of the car are the easiest to change to EV. So, and then we can see which of our cars don't drive like more than 200 kil uh, kilometers a year. So those are my targets to change to EV. And all the different, all the difficult ones, the people who don't want, uh, well, I've got another fleet uh, which has to uh, drive for like seven years and I can switch on get the diesels back from the people who don't uh, drive as much and give them back to the people who think they don't uh, uh, um, can use an EV. You know I mean. That's great. Thank you very much for the insight. Um, William, you're working with many fleets. Um, what are your experiences? Um, how they can trans transition to EV or and how do you um, do you help? the customers in that transition yeah so i think the the example michiel just gave uh, open browsers is, uh, is a classical one so the big question is how how can we electrify our fleet and and then there are many unknowns 
And so uh, what we then do is, first of all, we look at uh, the demand side of the energy uh, equation. And so you have a current fleet uh, with uh, uh, internal combustion engine uh, vehicles. So when, when those are connected, um, after three months, we, we have what we call an electrical vehicle suitability assessment. Um, and that assessment then shows after three months which electrical vehicle alternatives uh, can operate in your fleet given your operation. And so really looking at the data of how many kilometers um, uh, are being driven on the day, uh, the stops, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that takes away uh, a lot of unknowns on the demand side of the energy equation, but then still the uh, fleets like uh, Michiel is, um, is responsible for, you also need to understand what the supply side of the energy needs to be. And so do I need AC-DC charging? Uh, is it hub spoke? Is it destination charging? So still a lot of uh, unknowns, right? Um, and that's why, you know, also there we're partnering up with uh, uh, energy infrastructure uh, suppliers um, uh, who then can actually bring their consult to fleet like uh, like open borrowers. Um, what is interesting here is, and it's back to that point of sharing data, um, because all those charging infrastructure companies that give good consult, so let's first put that out there, good consult, but the way they do it is they go on site uh, interview drivers, understand how many kilometers they're doing, they're looking at the, the site itself, um, uh, uh, the infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and they base their consult on that. Now, you can imagine if the, the data that comes from this electrical vehicle suitability assessment is being shared also with the supply side of the energy equation, the infrastructure providers, then they can base their consult on data. And, and we in MOVE like to say data has a better ID, right? So then the two come together and then only then it starts to answer the big question how can i electrify my my fleet right and uh, i think given that uh, if we can do that uh, smooth then it helps um, uh, companies like hoppenbauers to make their decisions on electrifying much much faster and so and then when they are electrified yeah. um uh, we're we're working towards uh, uh uh, and on a certification level, actually quantify what's the sustainability impact of that electrification. Uh, and this we really want, want to bring to our clients because they can actually start using that uh, in their reporting on how they uh, do in the market uh, as opposed to others. Okay, thank you. And I, I think that's very important. I want to want to highlight uh, the terminology you mentioned, the Electronic Vehicle Suitability Assessment, EVSA, um, to the audience, please um, have a look. Uh, it's, it's publicly available, the information about this, and that's a really good tool and really good method to take away some of the anxiety if you want to transition to EV, because this is based on data, and that we come back to, to telematics, this is based on your real fleet data um, and to make sure that the usage of the vehicle as you use them today is safeguarded in the future with EVs as well. And only those EVs um, that are suitable for your use, use case um, can, then, can then be transitioned and that really helps a lot. So, um, Daniel is, is back here. That's a sign that we should come to the end. Um, maybe I want to have just one quick question to Michiel and Wilhelm. Um, how do you see the future of telematics and connectivity? Quick answer. Very bright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was very yeah. quick. <laughs> you can't go uh, without it. All right. Okay. So thank, thank you very much. Then uh, thank you. Michiel, thank you, Wilhelm, for this really interesting discussion. And um, it was a real pleasure uh, having this uh, panel session with you. I really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much. And um, back to Daniel then. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you, Krista. Thank you, William. Thank you, Mikhail. So, uh, and thanks for organizations for this uh, debate. Uh, very interesting and interactive. It's very, very useful. Um, I will invite to all participants uh, stay connected with us uh, because we will start right now the last sessions, closing this event and summarizing so uh, the lesson uh, uh, learned. Um, I will invite you to come back to live. You see on the left side, you see stage live. So I will invite all of you so to come to go directly to a uh, stage on live for the last presentation. Thank you very much and see you soon. So see you in Brussels, hopefully so at the Fleet Europe Summit. Bye bye. Thanks.